In today's video, I'm about to show you guys the best defensive settings. We're going to go over the best defensive badges. And then I'm also going to show you guys some clips on how you can play better defense overall. I'm going to show you guys how you can position yourself to get more steals. Two people that made a really good video on this is Legends World and the homie Laker fan. I have never been a good defender, but this year I've been trying to improve my defense. And with these tips, tips I want to help you guys improve your defense as well. Drop a like, man, drop a sub, turn on post notifications, and let's get right into it. So, for your defensive settings, I didn't realize how important this is, but changing these settings has really helped me not slide, and it really helps me stay in front of my man. So, for me, I turn my Huda guard off. I do not like the arrow. I feel like the arrow pulls me around too much, so I always turn that arrow off. For my defensive assist, assist strength, this is very important. You don't want to keep this on default, bro. I have found that this pulls you and it makes you feel like you're stuck in mud. I put my defensive assist strength all the way down on zero. This gives me way more room to move. I feel like I have way more control over my player whenever my defensive assist strength is on zero. But if that's too low for you, try 15. But you do not want to go over 15. Set this between 0 and 15 and you will notice a pretty big difference. And yeah man, those are basically everything that you want to change as far as your defensive settings go. This shading indicator, make sure you keep this on. Whenever you're playing your defender, whenever you see that red box, if they dribble into you, it basically makes it to where if you press X at the right time, you'll know and it'll just allow you to get more steals if that makes sense. All right, so look man, now let's talk about the best defensive badges that you need. And the thing is, you don't need to have cracked out defense to be able to play good defense and still get bump steals. This is my two-way playmaker. I don't even have half of my defensive badges yet. And you guys will see in these clips that I'm gonna show you, we're still able to get bump steals. You don't want to be a, a spammer, bro. You want to play solid defense and reach when the type when the time is right. You want to time your steals, and you will see way more success. But of course, man, the most important and most OP defensive badge on the game is glove. You definitely want to max that hoe out. Of course, clamps is also really good. I've heard that you see a big difference with gold clamps. Those two are probably the best badges that you need for on, on ball defense. I haven't heard good things out of Challenger. Interceptor doesn't really seem to work that well either, but if you have the extra badge points, you can definitely put that on. I also like Menace because this basically drops the attributes when you're staying in front of your man. Also, Anchor is a very important badge as well. You definitely want to max that hoe out. That's going to give you more contests around the room. Chase downs aren't very good this year. I would probably recommend putting this badge on bronze. As far as pick dodger goes, mainly you see ISO, but if you do run into a, a guard using screens, pick dodger is usually important. Pogo stick, I feel like, is a really good bronze badge that you may need. Need Workhorse will allow you to pick up the ball whenever you get these steals. So you can also put that on if you can. And then you can also rock ankle braces as well. This will prevent you from getting those stumble animations. I would play rock this on bronze. Also, off ball pass can be a good bronze badge as well. It allows you to stick to your man whenever you're playing off ball defense. But the thing is, like I said, you don't have to have cracked out defense to still be able to get bump steals and play good defense in general. So half of these clips are gonna come from my rec gameplay video that I posted a couple of days ago. That was a fire gameplay, you guys should check that out. But at halftime, you guys can see that this dude has 18 points. Bro is a purple rep, 6'9", demigod build. You're gonna see how we play good defense in this game to where he doesn't score in the second half and we make an insane comeback. And then I got some park defensive clips that we can go over as well. First, let's talk about how to position ourselves while we're full court pressing somebody bringing the ball 
up the floor. So the biggest tip that helped me is when that, whenever you're playing defense, you don't want to hold LT or turbo. If you're holding LT, you're basically going to be way slower and you're going to be stuck in the mud. Also, you don't want to hold turbo because a lot of times you will overshoot your man. So in this clip, what I'm doing is all, all, all I'm basically doing is following this dude. I'm not holding turbo or LT. I'm basically just running, running beside him and bumping him as he goes up the court. You want to position yourself to one side of the offensive player you want to force that offensive player to the baseline you guys can see that i basically robbed this dude's hip all the way up to the right side of the baseline and i'm able to force him into the help defender and we're able to get a bump still so the best way to play defense is you always want to force the ball handler to one side of the floor you never want them to be in the middle bro you want to make it as uncomfortable on them as possible guards are way more comfortable comboing up in the middle of the floor you always want to force them to either the left or the right side of the baseline so here is a really good example on how you can get bump stills you don't need a hostile rating to actually get these bump stills even though it does help so you guys can see how i'm positioning myself while i'm playing defense here i'm playing on his right hand side i'm banking that he will dribble back to his right hand because he wants to get back to the middle of the floor as you guys can see i'm focusing on that right hand side and then as soon as he dribbles back into me i'm able to press x and that allows us to get the bump still unfortunately i wasn't able to pick up the ball but this is a really good example on how to play the defender's hip so this is another really solid clip on how to actually position yourself to get bump stills. So once again, I'm pressing this dude up the court. I'm not holding LT, I'm not holding turbo. I'm basically just run, walking beside him using the left analog st stick and I'm bumping him while I can. But what I'm doing is I'm positioning myself on his left hand side and I'm forcing him to the baseline. You guys can see that once we get him to the baseline, the guard always wants to go back to the middle of the floor. So we're baking on him switching to his other hand. And as soon as we, as soon as he does, we're able to reach. But again, unfortunately, we wasn't able to pick the ball up. So this right here is a good example of team defense and being aware of where your help defender is at. Even though their spacing was really bad right here, the same thing applies as soon as he catches the ball i'm going to force him to one side of the baseline i know that we have a help defender on the right hand side so i'm able to force him into the help defender and you guys can see this is a good clip of team defense because as i force him to our help defender he's able to reach and also get a bump steal you always want to force the ball handler to wherever the help defense is at this is easier to do on like when you're playing fives like prime or rec but you can also still do this when you're playing park so this clip right here is a really good example of what you should do whenever you're guarding the pnr um i know that this is a full court screen you don't usually see this you don't really see pick and roll in general on nba 2k23 but the best tip that i've learned to guard the pnr is whenever you're fighting through the screen you don't want to hold turbo or press LT. All you want to do is use your left stick to run through the screen and you will notice that you'll get through the screen a whole lot better that way. I feel like whenever you fight through a screen and you're not holding LT or turbo, it gives you better, way better pick dodger animations. So keep that in mind if you're ever fighting through a screen. But in this clip, I don't know why he passed the ball. We was playing really good defense and we was able to force an eight second violation just by forcing this dude to the baseline. And as this dude, like I said, is as I'm about to hit this screen, I let go of turbo and LT, which I don't generally use those coming up the court anyway. And you guys can see that we're able to get through the screen a whole lot better. 
that way. So this clip right here is poor defense on my part. One thing that I really struggle with is staying in front of the defender whenever they're standstill dribbling or whatever the case may be. But like I said, the best way to play defense, especially whenever the defender is sitting there dribbling, if they're sizing up, doing misdirections, or whatever the case may be, is you just wanna stand there, right? When they're dribbling, you just wanna stand there because whenever you, you start shifting your player left to right, reacting to their drill moves, that allows them to speed boost in the opposite direction. Also, like I said, when you're playing on, the, on ball defense, you do not wanna hold LT because that will slow you down and leave you stuck in the mud. Whenever they're standstill dribbling, you just wanna stand there and then you want to move whenever they finally do speed boost. It's kind of hard to do, but that's the best way to play defense and be able to keep up with the offensive player. So for this last clip that I got for you guys from this video um, is how the actual shading defensive system works in NBA 2K23. It may be a little hard to see. I try to zoom in the best that I can, but you guys can see that there will be three green boxes under the offensive player. And whenever you're playing the defender to one side or you're in front of the defender in general, that box will turn red. Basically meaning that if the defender tries to dribble back that direction, if you press X, it allows you to get more steals in general. So you can use the shading system to know how to tom your bump steals. So now I got some part clips and you basically want to play defense the same exact way whether you're in park however there's way le less help defense in the park because if a team has good spacing there's just more room to operate but you guys can see that in this clip we're gonna be going against a 6-9 demigod he's got the gold and he shoots extremely well from twos and threes so clearly this dude knows what he's doing so this is a good example of how to play good defense in park and position yourself to get bump steals. You guys can see that their spacing here is very terrible. Whenever this happens, you always want to take advantage of it if possible. You guys can see how I'm playing this dude. I'm playing on his right hand side because you guys can see that Koza's man is extremely close to us. The spacing is really bad. So I'm forcing this dude towards the closest help side defender unfortunately we're unable to get the bump still and that does happen sometimes and you guys can see that he just gets a random blow by animation but this is still very solid defense so in this clip once again their spacing is extremely bad and the way that i'm going to position myself on this dude is i'm going to play his right hand I've noticed that throughout this game, this dude really likes to go right. Part of defense is learning the offensive, offensive player's tendencies throughout the game because most guards or ISO players in general just have a few combos that they'll do. So I'm sitting on this dude's right hand very heavily. You guys can see that he doesn't want to shoot this. He does a little walk back. You can tell that he jinxed his shot and we're able to play good good solid defense and force a bad um, shot. So in this clip, same thing applies. You always wanna try and force the defender to one side of the court. And like I said, I noticed this dude is only going right. And I also noticed that they have extremely bad spacing. The dude in the corner comes up so not only am i sitting on this dude's right hand but i also noticed that i'm able to force this dude into a help defender just from the poor spacing we get a plug off of that but unfortunately he's able to pick the ball up and he's still able to score that's just bad luck and it does happen sometimes so for this last defensive clip like I've been saying, it's all about reading the offensive player. This dude has tried to force and go right every single player. You will notice that if you angle your player to one side of the defender, you will get more bump steals. I'm playing this dude's hip completely to the right. I'm banking that he's gonna go back to the right, to that right hand. And as soon as he does, 
I'm able to reach and get a really good steal. So man, I do apologize that this video was so long. I didn't mean it to be this long, but it's all good. I'm not saying that these are the best 2K players in the world or anything like that, but I'll, what I am saying is, if you're able to position yourself, you can play really good defense. In my rec clips, I hardly have any defensive badges. And then in my park clips, I'm on, I'm on my two-way slash and playmaker with silver defensive badges. Hopefully these tips will help some of y'all boys out. Make sure y'all boys drop a like, drop a sub, turn on notifications. We out. Peace.